What's going on, everyone? You know, got the hoodie on, baby. It's fall, it's getting colder. Let's talk about now busting into this hot chocolate and flavoring the hot chocolate. I got some things I wanna to talk to you about that. And I also, in the second half of the video, wanna talk about pricing. But without further ado, let's get into this, right? This is a new hot chocolate, or a new flavor. We're trying with our hot chocolates. If you haven't watched my content before, you know, the key to making great hot chocolate, particularly if you're trying to sell it, is to use coffee creamer to help flavor the hot chocolate how you want it to go. Now, so peppermint mocha, you know, it's seasonal. You have to grab this when a time, when it comes due. Uh, what did um, Sweet Lums of Mine say? Said the pumpkin spice is in there. If you want to do pumpkin spice hot chocolate, whatever. That's the seasonal. They're all out now. So we traditionally just do peppermint but we're going to try peppermint mocha this year i think it's going to be great it's going to add that extra chocolate boost with the mocha to your hot chocolate in addition to the hint of peppermint taste i'm ready to go versus straight peppermint we'll see uh, i'm going to buy some of the straight peppermint as well just in case but i definitely look forward to trying this so yeah we're going to use that this year and do it the same way just do um whipped cream on top of it Bust the star mints, dribble, dribble, drop the crumbs of star mints on top of the hot chocolate. You know, and if you highlight your base hot chocolate, you know, mix with the coffee flavoring, it's absolutely incredible. And then when you add the toppings, it's even better. So we're going to try peppermint mocha. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Next, you know, there is a difference, at least with for, for me and my taste with cheap coffee flavorings and good coffee flavorings okay so i want to talk to you about that now there's a lot of products in our industry you can buy the cheaper version of the name brand version and it tastes like identical right but this for me is no comparison so let's talk about this if you want to do caramel hot chocolates right here's a caramel latte from coffee mate much smaller container versus something like this right same caramel flavoring but it's not even close yes you get more this is bigger than this also cheaper than where's that caramel than this but for me it, it's it's not even close when it comes to coffee creamer so i would rather use less of this even though it's more expensive and get a better flavoring uh better experience for our customers and man i'm them caramel hot chocolates with the whipped cream and then you you drip the caramel forget about it it's it's great it's wonderful so yeah now next thing i want to talk about is just general flavoring okay of your hot chocolates a lot of people want to overcomplicate it guys it's just like lemonade you can do it as you're making the hot chocolate if you want to do double chocolate hot chocolate what do you folks down south uh, um cocoa hot cocoa right whatever you call it doesn't matter but if you use the chocolate cream and you want to do a double chocolate you can do it at the time of serving you just have a base mix okay whether you use your own recipe or you use swiss miss it does yes it matters as far as taste goes between the two but it's up to you and your company model right doesn't matter we do both all year long. Sometimes we'll do Swiss Miss. Sometimes we'll make our own mix. It just depends on the event, location, etc., labor, all that, right? So all you do is have your base mix, whatever it is. And then you, you put how many tablespoons you want in a cup. Then you put however many tablespoons or teaspoons of this flavoring in there to match your taste, okay? And then you just use a battery powered whisk, move it up and down. I mean, we're talking 30 to 45 seconds. So the, the time to make a hot chocolate and the lemonade is darn near identical. If you want to make them each one, you know, by hand from scratch. Then you just with the whipped cream, put the little toppings on it that you want to put on it. Voila, there you go. So, uh, oh, before I get into pricing, which is super important, just pricing in general, 
and just some of the tips like, like our company uses for pricing and some of my thoughts on it. Before I get into it, I got a membership group. It's only $2 a month, baby. We do workshops twice a month and you get exclusive videos from me. There you go. It'll be the link to the membership group will be in the description. Oh man, you should have. The last membership uh, group in a voice chat was, was incredible. So yeah, you're missing out if you're not in it. So let's talk about pricing. Okay. We typically do not use set pricing. Now there are times at some locations that all season long, depending upon what that venue is doing, we'll do set pricing the whole time because a lot of times it's the same customers on repeat over and over again, week in and week out. So we don't want to have a lot of variance with the prices. However, this location over here may have totally different prices. So yeah, we change our prices. And then on the mobile side, it could change event to event. It just totally depends. So we are by and large, totally fluid with our pricing. Okay. We don't use set prices usually because I think if you, I have my notes here, so I may look down from time to time, you know, being able to be flexible with your pricing allows you to be more profitable. And let's talk about a couple things here. Let's just use lemonade as an example. If you're selling lemonade for eight bucks and everybody around you is selling lemonade for eight bucks, but you undercut them, right? And just say, sell it for six and you're flexible with your pricing what if you sell twice as much as you normally would have then that then volume in this case is better than sticker shock there's a lot of companies i know guys there's a lot of y'all that just do the same price event out and event in and it works for you that's great that just hasn't been our model and it hasn't worked for us so for us flexible pricing um is the way to go and if you haven't done it before maybe try it utilize the flexible pricing at different events you know and, and there's times you can go really high on a pricing right if you're like the only vendor or there's just another vendor and y'all can talk about it and be like hey let, let's just go eight bucks both of us and split the difference between everybody you can do that too instead of undercutting each other just you know really depends but it's important i think as a company to be flexible with your pricing now you cannot be flexible with your pricing if you don't know your COG, your cost of goods, right? You can't do it. You have to know how much goes into each product and how much it's gonna cost you. That way, you know how low you can go, right? As far as your flexibility with your pricing. I don't mind making a four to one, like if we're talking lemonade, a four to one. If I can make an eight to one, it's great, but I don't mind a four to one or a six to one at all with uh, doing products like that okay so for us volume really matters over sticker price and i've never i know you've heard me say those who've watched me for years know that's what i've said but yeah that's just the model that works for us volume over sticker price and being flexible with your pricing has really just really worked out great for us every company's different right this video is sponsored by the one and only KettleCornMachine.com. They got the best lemonade and kettle corn equipment in the market. Guys, we've used your A1 Sweet Machine for darn near 15 years. Check them out. KettleCornMachine.com. All right. Have a good one.